Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 358 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I have really hurt my neck. I've done it again. This is a recurring injury where every now and then I do something or I sleep weird and I pull a muscle in my neck and I can't fucking turn it left or right. It sucks, dude. I I can't move my neck. I'm like Batman from Batman Begins. Every time I want to look to the left or the right, I got to move my whole chest because my head is attached to the to the to the cow that has no no neck. I really, dude. I did the the. I've given myself the most thirty years old injury ever. All right, I've officially hit thirty years old because just on a whim. All right, I just I saw I saw one TikTok. I saw one video of someone doing an outdoor workout and I thought I want I want to do calisthenics. I want to I want to learn learn calisthenics. I can't learn calisthenics. I'm I'm 6 foot 8. That that's not a sport that's for me. I like I I won't touch basketball, but I'll do a, I'll I'll attempt a sport that is made for like 5 foot 1 Russian women. What do you mean I'm gonna what? I'm gonna I'm gonna put a fucking pull-up bar over a door frame? How? Door frames come up to my fucking chest, man. Like there's there's nothing I can hang from in my house that's not the roof. I found one spot where I could attach some Olympic rings. All right, which is very ambitious of me. Oh, I, I, I want to learn calisthenics. I'm gonna start with Olympic rings. I hung them up somewhere where I can do it. And look, I can do pull-ups. I'm pretty good at pull-ups. I'm a strong man. All right? I've, I've been doing pull-ups. They've been great. Every morning, I would wake up. I would I would go outside. I would do as many push-ups as I can in a row. Six in the morning. 32 push-ups is the record right now. Then I would go out to my calisthenics rings, do as many pull-ups as I can. I can do six. That's pretty good on the Olympic rings. That's nice. That's a good amount. And then I've got the handles that go down, right? They go down to your waist. So I thought, oh, well, maybe I could try and do a hold with my arms at my waist. And I can I can hold myself. That's, that's awesome as well. Great core exercise. And then I think, fuck, I'm like a prodigy at this stuff. I'm, I'm awesome. What I should do right on my third time ever trying calisthenics at 6 a.m. straight after I woke up, no wo- no warm-up, no stretching, is I should just start trying to do some dips suspended from fucking ropes. Now, dips are hard enough when you're doing it on a stable platform. That's difficult enough. You do it, you add ropes. Dude, I did one. And I was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. And that is amazing. That's incredible. I bet you couldn't do one. I bet you couldn't even hold yourself, all right? So before you laugh at me, I I fucking challenge you, go and find a pair of ropes and try and do a dip, brother, okay? And if you can do it, it doesn't count because you're not two meters tall. Okay, so before you laugh at me, I, I want you to ask, I want you to genuinely ask yourself, could I do that? And I know the answer is no, so don't laugh at me. God, my neck hurts. This is going to be a short episode because, I, I mean, I'm recording this at 8 p.m. That's I, I don't want to do this. My neck hurts and I've been doing stretches and exercises all day just so I can do this podcast. All right. How good was last episode? We did an hour 40. And overwhelmingly, the response was, we love the long podcast. Do long podcast. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to do long podcast. Two dips later, I think we might be here for 20 minutes. (laughs) Ow. (laughs) Ow. Oh, it's not good. It's not good at all. Right? So I managed to do one dip day one. I'm thinking I'm I'm the strongest man alive. I'm a fucking gymnast. I'm a prodigy. I'm going to be the world's tallest and oldest Olympic gymnast. Because that's another thing. Not only do you have to be like four foot nine and a Russian woman, you also have to be fucking 14 years old, all right? You can't start gymnastics at 6 foot 8 and 30 and and walk away from that shit without 
an injury that permanently changes the way that you move your neck. All right. So I do, I do one dip day one. I'm thinking I'm the strongest man alive. Day two, I do, I do another dip. I'm like, man, I can do, I can do one dip. That's awesome. Day three, I do a dip and I think I reckon I could go for two. And then a little part of me thought, Maybe I should just stick with doing one and some holds for like at least a week and then maybe I'll try something a bit more difficult. But as we know, if there's one thing about me, my greatest power and my greatest weakness is often my confidence, right? So I go for the second dip and I just start slowly falling down and I strain so fucking much. God, I, I reckon I reckon if I strained any harder, my skull would have detached from my neck and shot up through the roof. You, like the neighbors would have had to pick up my head from their backyard. That's how that's how much tension I put on my traps, my neck, and my and my fucking skull, dude. And I think I fused every single vertebrae into a single piece. Because I can't look down left up or right and you you forget about diagonal and that's and not being able to look down is very difficult for someone of my height every conversation i'm having with i'm looking down my nose at them i look i'm like the most arrogant ever i'm, I'm gonna have to start i can't say that word it gets the podcast demonetized every episode stop saying that word Oh, I would like to grow the podcast. I'm going to say the one word that, that limits the reach and demonetize it every, every fucking episode. Last episode's the best performing episode of the year. I said, I said the naughty word like three times in it. Demonetized, limited reach. Probably would have gone so much better. I'm not angry at you. I'm angry because I can't turn my head. That's what I'm upset about. I need to start wearing a neck brace just so I don't look like I'm being rude. And I've done this before and I've I've been to a physio and it's literally because I look down all day because I'm because I'm so big. He's like, "Man, all I can say is try not to look down." And I'm like, "Okay, cool. Well, can't do that. My kitchen bench is too low." Every human is, is like, like me having a conversation is, I can't do it in an ergonomic way, unfortunately, for my neck. All right. You know, when you get a new job and they set your desk up for the perfect height and they give you a chair and your monitor has to be at the perfect height and the top of the monitor has to be where your eye level is. If they did that for a conversation with me and another human being, I, I wouldn't be able to work there. <laughs> oh, ow. <laughs> I don't know if I could do, I don't know if I could do this episode, to be honest. Fuck that hurt. Every time I sneeze, I just know it's going to be the, uh, incredible pain. Bro, I got to film a video tomorrow for the channel. People are going to be like, dude, this video is pretty funny, but why does he look, why does he look stiff? I strained so hard, I fused all the vertebrae in my neck together. I don't have I don't have vertebrae in there. I've got one shin bone in 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 my neck. It's not good. What it is, and I can actually feel it because of the tension, the muscles. One of the vertebrae gets pulled to the right, and I can literally feel it. It goes bone, bone, bone. Oh fuck, where is it? You take a right turn, you find it. Then you take a left turn, and it's the rest of the fucking spine. So I won't be doing any dips for a while. And what's really frustrating about this is I sent a video of me doing some pull-ups to my mother and my father. And both of them said, be careful with those. You're going to hurt yourself. And I said, how? <laughs> I was like, what's going to happen? If, if the rings snap, I'll land on my feet. Yeah, it turns out falling is not the only way you can hurt yourself. It's the most 30-year-old injury ever. I'm going to try out a new form of exercise and a new hobby. Oh, my fucking spine hurts. <laughs> Bro, I remember when I was like 11, 10 or 11 years old in primary school, 
I was on the monkey bars and I had this idea in my head that I could that I could launch myself from one bar and and leap to the next bar just off pure momentum because I saw I saw someone do it in a martial arts film. You know, like those Ninja Warrior where they leap from one bar to the other. And uh, I didn't think to to ask someone how to do it or to watch a video on how to do it or whatever. I was just like, I reckon I could just fucking figure it out. I'm 10 years old, meter, meter and a half up in the air on the monkey bars. I just swing my legs forward and it, I don't go anywhere. I just go completely parallel to the ground and then land on my back, the most winded I've ever been in my life. I still remember the sound that I made. And then I just got up and walked away. No injury, nothing. Now if I try and do some exercise, I almost snap my fucking head off. So yeah, anyway, guys, it's it's good it's it's good to it's good to be uh, it's horrible to be here. I don't want to be here. I hope this is entertaining to you. I hope this is, is my suffering is of value to you because you're only going to get about twenty five minutes of it if you're lucky. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Ow! Anyway, let's get through this, shall we? All right. Uh, Liam Plain died. He jumped off the balcony, went went the complete wrong direction, and he has died, which is unfortunate. But, you know, also that is the most airtime that Liam Payne has gotten for years. So that, there's there's a silver lining in everything, in every cloud. No, for real, though, that's, that's horrific. That is horrible. Poor guy. Sounds like he was just on heaps of drugs. He was on the third floor of a hotel, and he thought he could, he could jump into the pool. And, um, yeah, it turns out you can't. I mean that, which is kind of embarrassing, but it's it's you know it could have been worse. He could have he could have been died doing calisthenics. That's much more embarrassing, you know. Could you imagine you woke up one day and you read the headlines: comedian Lewis Spears dead at thirty years old, freak calisthenics accident, and you'd be like, calisthenics? <laughs> I thought this guy was a comedian. Since when does he do calisthenics? How do you die doing calisthenics? <laughs> Ow. Oh. Um, anyway, but I, I'm talking about this because I went very viral on TikTok and Instagram with a, a video that I posted of my of my Disney princess moment. I've made friends with all of the birds in my area, magpies. If you're not from Australia, magpies... They're beautiful birds, but they're very misunderstood because during springtime, when they're nesting, they become very territorial and they'll swoop you. And they have been known to pluck out the eyes of children and cyclists. And obviously one of those things is really bad. Um, and the other is is uh, cyclists. Um, so they have like a, a lot of people are scared of them. They've got a, da- a reputation for being dangerous and scary because they'll, they will swoop you and they snap their beaks and it's scary and you feel them go past. But if you just kind of whistle and say hello to them and talk to them, they come to actually recognize you and uh, you can befriend them. And that's what I have done. And I posted a video of me walking down a street, whistling and the birds all coming up to me, jumping on the fence and, near my head and saying hello, investigating me, right? All my mates, they do this every morning. It's beautiful. One of the best parts of my day, right? So I post that and that goes ballistic, especially on Instagram. I think it has like a million views, right? And because I'm marginally more attractive than I used to be, a lot of those those viewers were women and all of the followers were. Because also, not only, right, of course, it's not just my face. It's because it was a beautiful, wholesome, sweet moment of a man and his birds, a man experiencing nature and in, and being present and just kind of being kind and friendly and showing people a cool trick that they can use to make friends with the uh, Australian wildlife that he so cherishes. And that's a beautiful thing. 
So that did a million views and I got so many followers of for people who uh Hey, stop licking your pussy. That's gross. Yuck. Don't lick your pussy. I can hear it from all the way over there. If that got picked up on the microphone, they're going to be very disappointed in you. That is disgusting. My dog's having a mukbang on her own pussy over there in the corner. It's disgusting. It's absolutely foul. The noise. Yuck! Nikocado avocado eating his own ass in the corner. It's not good. Anyway, what I was trying to say was I went very viral because I, I released a really wholesome, beautiful, sweet moment that made me look like a Disney princess. Thousands of new female bird life, wholesome followers. Do you know what I posted an hour after? An hour after Liam Payne died, I, I put up a tweet on my Instagram that said Liam Plain and the caption was wrong direction. I lost so many of those new followers. <laughs> uh, dude, and you know what? Fair enough. All right. If you followed a guy because you thought he was like some Disney princess, Steve Irwin, wholesome, animal loving, wildlife guy. And then and then he made fun of your, uh, your favorite boy band falling to his death, trying to jump into a pool 10 minutes after he hit the fucking gravel. I would, un that, that's fair. I would unfollow too. That's, that's, that they got, I've never seen so many new followers get whiplash coming into our space and then immediately exiting. You got to respect them for it. Hardly got any angry comments, just got hundreds of unfollows. <laughs> And I gotta res I have to respect the silent unfollow. That's great. There's nothing worse than someone being like, oh, usually you're pretty funny, mate, but this one's too far. Gotta unfollow. All right. What are you, a fucking airport announcing departures? See you later, cunt. Ah, oh, I gotta stop saying that. I'm upset because my neck hurts. <sighs> I should not be doing this. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to talk about one more thing, and then I've got to I've got to end the show because my my neck hurts so much. <laughs> and I I was like, look, I, I was like, you know what? I'll do it tomorrow. And then I thought, no, I made a promise. I'm not missing any episodes. I'm doing an episode. And also, chances are Monday, I'm, I'm going to feel worse because I'm going to sleep and I'm going to wake up locked up. This always takes like three or four days and I just, I'm just in this foul mood where I can't turn my fucking neck. Asmongold's in a lot of trouble because uh, he was on stream saying that he didn't care about Palestinians dying because they're very homophobic and, and his words, they come from an inferior culture. <laughs> I had no idea he was streaming on kick. I thought he was on Twitch. That's some, that's, dude, put him on rumble. He'll trend. But of course, this he received an unbelievable amount of backlash because a lot of his, uh, I, I mean, a lot of his, uh, this guy's so big and he owns like a lot of businesses and a lot of the, a lot of the business co-owners that he works with are like Arabic or Muslim and I believe some people that even work for him are Palestinian. <laughs> imagine, dude, imagine waking up at like at, in the morning, you know, rushing to get to work on time and you and you turn on the live stream on the way to work to see your boss going, yeah, I reckon uh, Palestinians are inferior and they should die. I don't care if they do. And look, you said a lot of things that like, uh, you know, uh, 
are valid, which is like, yes, you know, in Palestine, if you're gay, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, and yes, uh, if Palestinians had the same capabilities to do the damage that Israel can do, they would probably do the same. Uh, but like you have to enable a culture to improve and a culture cannot become socially progressive when they are the victims of a genocide, you know? Like, do you remember co when COVID happened, how quickly those, the, the LGBT pride flags fucking disappeared from everyone's bio? Because unfortunately, who you're fucking and whether or, whether or not we should allow it takes a real back seat when there's rockets flying overhead and, and everyone's 15 and no one has parents. All right? I don't, I'm not too concerned about the legality of uh, homosexual relationships in Palestine because everyone there is underage anyway. <laughs> so... so You know, most of the population doesn't know if they're gay or straight yet. So it, it's not it's not really an issue that's that should be uh, on the top of the priority list, you know? I don't know. It's what a what a stupid, dumb thing to say. Because a a culture having a lot of problems does not mean they are uh, that that we shouldn't care that they get killed. And a culture cannot improve and modernize under threat of war. Like, this is why it's like you got to fucking leave them alone for like a thousand years. That whole region is completely fucked because of foreign intervention. And it has been completely fucked because of foreign intervention for like a thousand years. Because people keep giving money and weapons and influence and proxy wars and this and that. You know, even just even just from the Cold War to now, it's like the whole the whole place has just been funded by foreign powers and fucked with when really we just need to leave them alone, let them figure it out, and the whole place will just very, very, very slowly improve because that takes generations and generations and generations and that's the the world. The more you fuck with it, the more it's going to kick off. I don't know. I think they should stop doing that. That's my solution. Whenever I talk about this, people are like, yeah, but what about this? I'm like, dude, I don't know either, all right? It's, it's, been, it's one of literally one of the oldest conflicts on the planet. I don't know how to fix it, but I tell you what, I think they should stop and I don't like that uh, my tax dollars go to rockets that land on kids. So it'd be nice if that stopped. I think that's not good. So that's what I, that's 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 my solution. Is uh, is I think we I think they should stop doing that, and we should stop helping them do it. Let them sort it out on their own. You know. Because it seems like giving a hundred billion quadrillion dollars to just one team seems a little bit a little bit unfair and seems like maybe that maybe it seems like the whole world has kind of tacitly agreed without saying it that oh it'll resolve itself when the other team is just fucking devastated and doesn't exist anymore. That seems to be like the unsaid plan of like, yeah, you know, it'll sort itself out when these guys aren't fucking around anymore. I don't know. Um, I need a neck massage. I think that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. I think I'm going to I'm going to go to a physio and get myself a, a vertebrae separation because whatever I did, it's not good. It's not good at all. But this Asmongold situation, to finish up, he's an idiot for saying that. Uh, and he's kind of he's come out and he's his response was actually quite good. Uh, his response was, Yeah, look, I am a horrible person, and uh the internet has made me worse. 
because I spend too much time on it and I'm live 24-7 just looking at social media and the worst of us and it's made me bad. And yeah, fuck yeah. And also, I don't know, maybe Asmongold is a little bit upset because, you know, even after the billions and billions of dollars spent on rockets shelling Gaza, his bedroom still looks less habitable, you know? Then Gaza does. Like, uh, even after all the rockets and the war footage I've seen in Gaza, I would still rather be there than in Asmongold's bedroom. Because, you know, a, a rocket landing on you is pretty likely, but the communicable disease you could get from, I don't know, accidentally stepping on a three-decade-year-old pizza and the mold that it would that it would shoot up into the air like a horror scene from, from Last of Us, that, I mean, that wouldn't be good at all. So he's come out and he said, essentially, I'm paraphrasing, I'm a horrible person because the internet has corrupted my mind and turned me into a very negative person and it's only getting worse. And like, yeah, dude, that's that's what the internet does. That's what just uninhibited social media access does to the human brain. It just makes you a very negative, uh, bitter, spiteful person. If you don't keep a lid on the amount of internet usage that you have, especially social media. And, and you know, of course, like it's, it's obviously very important to never miss an episode of Spearhead Sundays and to consume every piece of content that I make because I make the only type of content that actually makes you a, a better, happier, healthier version of yourself. <laughs> um. But yeah, he's come out and he's just said like, yeah, I'm 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 a bad person and the internet's making me worse. And it's like, absolutely, dude. You know, I I uh out of interest, I chucked on Hassan Piker talking to Asmongold on their stream, and and I saw that it was like three hours long. I thought, fuck that. I just skipped to somewhere in the middle and I just caught like a couple minutes before I turned it off. But it was literally like them talking about an unrelated topic. Asmongold goes, Hey, do you look at Twitter? You, you're probably you're probably on Twitter a lot. Like you're on Twitter all the time, yeah, because of your job. And Hassan goes, "No, that website's awful." And then Asmongol goes, "I'm on Twitter all the time." And I was like, "There it is. That place will make you fucking hate any any group." Every time I go on Twitter, I can just feel that app trying to make me racist. I can feel it, and it's and and it's not working. But I can feel it trying to get its hooks in and, 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 and be like, hey, have you, have you heard of this statistic? <laughs> oh and it's not a good place to be, man. And that's like, I, I, feel, I look, I feel for Asmongold because he's obviously very, he, I mean, not obviously, but he appears to be very autistic. He has obviously gone through a lot in his life. He just put out this huge video about why he's like a hoarder and can't clean his room. And it all boils down to a bunch of stuff he's been through and the death of his mother. The guy's obviously, the guy obviously struggles in a huge way to fit into society by his own admission. Uh, and all he does all day is inundate his mind with the worst of humanity interface with that amount of negativity, get sent all of this horrible news and shit, even just even about things that he loves, like video games and stuff like that. He only sees the worst side of people and the most poison takes. That goes into his brain. Then he spits out negative content of like, here's why this sucks. Here's why this is bullshit. Here's why this is a scam. And he gets rewarded for it massively. And it creates this giant fucking positive feedback loop to intake and output pure negativity. And if you do that for long enough, you just become poisoned yourself. It changes your brain, obviously. Like you, like what you, the 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 media diet that you consume can completely alter who you are. Like the saying that you are who you're friends with, we all know that's true, but you also are what you consume. And that's why it's really important to get your 
your news from multiple different sources, even people that you disagree with, because it just kind of tempers your views and your personality and it allows you to at least acknowledge the perspectives of others. This is why reading books is really important, uh, even if it, especially if it's fiction, you know, because you because you read a book and you literally step into someone else's head that's not you. A woman, a man, a this or that, a fucking vampire or whatever. Like these things, they they make you more open to the variance in the human experience. But when you're sitting in your room alone looking at chat of people that are inherently very negative because you're putting out negativity and they're attracted to negativity. They're giving you negativity and then they're rewarding you with millions of dollars and notoriety and fame and influence and power because you're the most negative motherfucker on the internet. Then fuck yeah, you're going to end up looking at yourself. This is exactly what he's done. He looked at the last few years of work that he's put out and gone, holy shit, I have gotten so much worse, and I've become a really bad negative person. This is awful. This is bad. And that's what happens when you don't leave your fucking house. And all you do is just look at Twitter and look at, like, conservative reactionary shit on YouTube or or look at, like, uh, just endless war footage and, and, and genocide shit and propaganda and... All of this horrible stuff, like there are so many people that the only thing they do on social media is essentially like browse live leak and then go, why am I mentally ill? And ah, because you're watching people die if, like fucking every morning you wake up and check your phone and you're fucking watching people burn in refugee camps. And it's like, that stuff is like, yeah, it is important to know that that's going on and it's important to be aware when really bad things happen and to use your voice to, to try and help prevent those things. But there are so many people who think that activism is watching fucking children die on social media. And it's like, no, dude, that's not doing anything for them that's just making you fucking insane and giving you PTSD. Your brain doesn't really know that that's not real. So you watch this shit endlessly. It fucks you up. And the same goes for just sitting there and consuming negativity again and again and again and commenting on it and all this kind of stuff. Like that's why I've really put in an effort with the videos that I'm making now to make them, because obviously I am criticizing with, with these, but I'm really trying to make them positive and I'm really trying to just make them funny before anything else. Funny and interesting. Like the video they did on the presidents with the microphone off. I was so upset at myself. That was such a good video and the mic was off. Um, but, you know, that's like I'm not really being negative at all. I'm just trying to be as funny and informative as I can. Uh, even like the lunchly stuff where I'm kind of taking the piss out of the product. I still, at the end of the day, I'm like, yeah, it's not a big deal. Like it's just, it's lunch. I'm trying to be funny. I'm trying to put a lot of effort into writing and stuff because I think a huge problem with YouTube is – People are just being negative. I feel like when I started, there was such an effort being put on, on like, not so much funny, but like entertaining. And there were like videos had sketches and this and that. And it's not so much that videos have to be more high effort. It's just, I feel like every time I watch a video about like what's happening on the internet and stuff like that, it's just like really low effort and really negative. Uh, and, uh, it's not good. So I'm trying to, I don't know, be more entertaining and bright and positive and be that because, and put that out there and put out funny into the world because, you know, like the last thing I would want to look at myself and see is like what Asmongold has seen looking at himself of like, holy shit, I just put out like poison into the world. And like, if you look at, if he, if he can look at himself 
and see the the psychic damage living like that for years has done to his own perspective and outlook and the energy he puts out. What do you think that's doing to his audience? Like that, you know, respect him and and listen to his takes and all that kind of stuff. If he has made himself so negative and 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 feel like shit and and feel like he's poisoned his worldview and his perspective on <laughs> being alive, basically. He's doing that to his audience as well, obviously to a much lesser extent, but it's still, it's a, it has an effect. Um, so I feel, I do feel for him in that sense because I, he, he definitely appears to be a very, very autistic guy who really struggles plugging in with society and humanity by his own admission. And so he's, he's holed himself up in his room after he's gone through some horrible stuff. He's lost his mom and he hasn't been able to cope with it. I mean, the guy can't even fucking clean his room. And then he's become wildly successful by making all of these coping mechanisms, these unhealthy coping coping mechanisms so much worse that have in turn made him so much worse and less happy and more negative. And that's a really hard pattern to get out of. Um, but you know where it starts? Going for a fucking walk. And feeding the birds. All right. I'm, I'm going to end it there. My neck hurts so much. Thank you for listening. Uh, sorry if this was short or not very good. I'm in a lot of pain. The Patreon episode I'm going to record tomorrow. That'll be up on Patreon tomorrow. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Sorry about this one. Um, 37 minutes. Well, the other one was an hour 40. So we've kind of, you know, if, if you average out the last two episodes, they're both long. All right. Thank you. Have a shit one. Bye. <laughs>